Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm doing a deep dive on the texture overlay tool in the local masking section of Luminar AI. If you saw my first look video about update four, you know they've added some new stuff to the texture tool. I thought I would dive in, jump into this, and show you how everything works in a little bit more depth than I covered in that first look video. Here's a photo. It's like 12 years old. It's a water tower in a small town here in Texas. Um, I like it, but it's not much of a photo. That's not the point. So um, I want to dive into how this tool works. So uh, if you're here in local masking, which is the second tab, you know probably that the first one is all the filters. The second one is local masking. Click add and click texture, and that will give you the texture menu. So this deep dive, I'm just going to walk through all the different buttons, the features, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of editing to the photo, but not a whole lot, but I want to show you how textures work. So if you're not familiar with a texture, it's basically another photo that you lay on top of this current photo and blend it together. You have to do this when you're talking about it with your hands because I don't know why I just did that. So anyway, texture selection, uh, you've got different categories here. The default one is all textures. That's going to be every texture that Luminar AI has in it. All right, you can put your own in there, which is uh, you're going to see in a minute, but you can scroll through and see a number of textures that are included. They also included two categories of textures, flares, which are going to be these uh, textures, and then sparklers, which are these. Uh, in both cases, those are basically what I call light leaks, which are cool, I think. You can also add your own texture uh, uh, packs, if you will, or folders of textures. I added this rain and snow texture folder. These are not my textures. These are rain and snow folders that I've, or textures I've gotten from somewhere over the years. You can stick them on top of photo and make adjustments. I'm going to hit reset so that uh, you're not looking at that. But um, basically, you can load your own, your own folders of textures. And then uh, this one, Urban Distre Distress, is my own texture pack that I sell on my blog. It's these 10 textures that give you some kind of cool, grungy kind of stuff. And then once again, stick it on there. And then you need to go in and do some blending. So um, let me hit reset on that as well. And the other thing you can do is this drop down menu. There is custom. So any custom textures you've loaded, then you click on that and you will see those there. Now that is custom textures that are not in their own folder. Like I've got an urban distress folder for my pack and rain and snow for those other textures. So if you click on custom, it's going to be any individual textures that are that you know that you've loaded yourself that are custom but are not in other groups, right? So I've got some here like this uh, this old weathered paper kind of thing, which I think looks pretty cool on this photo. And I'll come back and show you how to edit um, using the different tools here in a second. But there's one more piece of that, and that is when you click here, there's also show custom textures. Now when you click on that, it opens a folder, and this folder is basically showing you within you know and this is a Mac of course, but you're in library, you're in all these different group containers. Anyway, you're over here. You can see that I've got rain and snow and urban distress, and these are those folders that I added. Plus, these individual textures here are individual ones that I've also added um, individually outside of a specific folder. So, if you're curious about how do you load that, you can just drag, find a folder of textures on your desktop, for example, and drag it to that. Uh, folder over here on the left, this custom folder. And so I'm going to do that. I've got a number of uh, textures from a photographer named Ann McKinnell. I'll put a link down below. She's got some beautiful texture packs. What I'm finding is that it's basically moving that directly and I, I want a copy of it. So I'm going to go ahead and take, I uh, made a copy, Control D, I think it's Command D um, on a Mac. And I made a copy of it and I'm going to drag that over here and I'm going to drop that folder right here. And so what I've done is just made a copy of this texture group from Ann McKinnell. I'm going to remove the word copy. So it's just going to say Ann McKinnell textures. Remember, I'm in the Luminar group container here. So I'm going to close that. And now when I go to texture selection and go to all textures, you'll see I've got Ann McKinnell textures here. And it's going to show me all the different textures that she has, which are beautiful. And like I said, I'll put a link down below. This, by the way, what you're looking at is a combination of several of her texture packs. So that's how you can add your own folder of textures and group them within Luminar AI. I tend to recommend making a copy like I did there and moving it over because if for some reason something goes wrong with the software or 
you get a new version and maybe it doesn't update properly or something in the future, I'm just a risk averse kind of person. I would rather have used a copy of those textures inside Luminar so that I still have the original in my original folder location. Okay, we're gonna get into editing. I'm gonna go back to this custom texture and add that to the photo and it lays on top. And like I said, that's what a texture is. It's basically another layer. I know we don't really use the word layer in Luminar, but it operates like a layer. It sits on top. And then what you do is you go in and you blend it together. Now there is a place texture button. As you can see, this texture has been highlighted so I can move it around if I need to. Um, it actually lays just fine on top of this. So I'm gonna skip that, but that's what the place texture button is for. This one on the left will flip it the opposite way and then flip it back as you can see there. And this button here will do the same thing, but up and down, right? So I'm just gonna go back to the white west. Now opacity is how opaque is this? Do you want it to be all the way opaque, which means you're not gonna see through it at all, or do you want at zero, of course, you don't see anything. And so this is where you basically come in and decide how do you wanna blend the texture into the image, which we're gonna get into here with the advanced settings. Now I typically reduce opacity to somewhere around 25 or 30 before I start blending. And the only reason is because I wanna see as much, not as much, but I wanna see a good amount of that base image. In this case, this water tower, because I wanna see that subject matter and be able to tell how it's uh, line, how the texture is lying on top of it. Whereas if you're really high, you're not gonna see very much, right? So I tend to reduce it. And then what you can do is you can go in and make adjustments based on these advanced settings. Now, the first kind of adjustment is a blend mode. Now, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time trying to explain blend modes. I will tell you that the key thing to know is, as the name implies, a blend mode determines how the texture which is that layer on top, how it blends with the photo below it. So it's like, basically you've got your texture and you've got your base photo. You're sticking them on top via this tool and the blend mode is saying, how do these two kind of come together and what parts are visible? And there's a lot of options here. I totally recommend if you're just dying to learn a ton about all the different blend modes that you go read about them. I've read about them on many photography sites. There's some great resources out there. I'm not really one of them. It's kind of hard to explain in my opinion. So I'll take a quick look at blend modes. As you hover, you get that kind of what I call hover to discover. As you hover over it, you can kind of see darken. It looks pretty good. The tower's coming through really clear. The texture looks good. Multiply. You can just kind of see what's happening with some of these. Uh, lighten, screen, overlay. There's quite a few here. So I, I recommend usually that you just go through and kind of experiment. Um, I'm gonna actually go ahead and go with a normal blend mode. And to be honest, normal is actually not a blend mode. It's considered a blend mode, but normal is really just, it's the photo laying on top, excuse me, it's the texture laying on top of the photo at 40% opacity. It's not actually blending together. Visibly, you're seeing it on top of each other, but unlike these other blend modes where different things come into play, like with darken, you're seeing something happen here where that tower is coming through a bit more. Uh, normal blend mode is technically not a blend mode, but that's okay. We're going to call it a blend mode. So um, what I do is I reduce opacity. I adjust my blend mode. Here's another thing to think about, and this is a key thing, and that is you've got masking options here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, and let me know if you'd like to see this in the comments below, but I'm going to come back and do a tips and tricks video to show you how I approach using textures. But masking is a key thing. So you have masking here, and I recommend coming in and potentially reducing the amount of the texture with the erase tool on the subject matter itself. So what I would do is probably come in, reduce opacity, and just come in here and maybe slightly erase some of the texture from the water tower, just to give me a little bit better visibility into that itself without um, you know, completely obscuring the water tower. In fact, I might actually do a little bit more erasing, and that's why I go to low opacity, so I can just kind of come back a few times and adjust accordingly. But keep in mind, masking, very powerful option for you in the texture tool. Okay, so now we've got the texture on top of the photo, slightly reduced in opacity down to 40, and also slightly masked out of the main subject. And then you've got these four controls here, which is very, you know, fairly straightforward. Brightness, and again, keep in mind what I wanna point out here is you are, with these sliders, adjusting the texture, right? So brightness, if I go left, I'm reducing the brightness of the texture, and if I go right, I'm increasing it. I'm gonna go a little bit darker here. Contrast is gonna, come in as well. You can kind of see how that's operating on the photo. 
saturation. This is increasing the saturation of the texture, which of course is uh, heavily outside of the water tower, right? So this texture is getting more saturated. And then you can also come in and roll the hue um, if you want to. Not something that I do a lot, but it could come in really handy. And in fact, it kind of looks good like that, where it's kind of a little bit more orange than it was before, where it was a little bit more kind of yellow or khaki colored. But these sliders are impacting the texture and therefore how your photo is going to look with the texture on top of it. So if I click the before, you can see there's my photo before, just the water tower down in green Texas, and after with a texture applied, with a normal blend mode, with an opacity reduction, with some further adjustments here, and with some custom masking done. Another reason I do the masking is after I made these adjustments here, you can see how much more intense the texture is outside of the core water tower. And so that's allowing that subject to shine through. And I think it's a good way to kind of blend the two together, even if you used a blend mode and things like that. Um, so if I do a before and after, you can see we've made quite a difference on the photo, but that's how it works. It's fairly simple and straightforward. Keep in mind, you can use multiple textures. And on my tips and tricks video, which is coming next, I will also get into some of that as well as some other things that I do and think about when I'm editing with textures. But I hope this gives you a good kind of foundational rooting or grounding in how this tool works. I'll be back soon with more stuff. Hope you guys are well. Take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching and adios.